Hello, everyone. I'm Derek Dennis with ABC News here with the Beryl Elise's fifth annual Alternatives in Investment Conference. I'm here with Gary Butler and Ruan Van Vuren uh, with IMS, which is a Cayman Islands servicer of hedge funds. And you all talk about and really try to help these hedge funds decide really which way to go in terms of investments. And it's a volatile financial picture worldwide. So, Gary, talk about what you're looking for in terms of hedge funds. What is it that IMS does in, in terms of helping these hedge funds? So what we do to help hedge funds is we provide independent directors and independent governance services to them. Um, and really, that's not aimed at helping the, the fund managers necessarily. It's more aimed at helping the fund as a whole and making sure that investors' interests are fulfilled uh, and that all of the, the service providers to the hedge funds are doing their jobs properly. So really, we're looking out for the interests of the investors. And Ruhan, why Cayman Islands? Why is this bad of a good place for you to be as a company? Well, um, the Cayman Islands is um, well known for its uh, tax uh, neutral status. So, um, uh, you know, hedge fund managers, um, alternative uh, um, uh, investment managers, they obviously love the jurisdiction to uh, incorporate the entities there to kind of benefit from that tax um, neutral status. Um, and then additionally to that, um, the Cayman Islands have all top quality service providers. So top quality lawyers, you know, accounting firms and so forth. So um, those um, uh, additional service providers obviously feed into the whole product that we sell. Um, and it is obviously... Uh, um, I mean, I, I can probably add to that a little bit as well. Obviously, sure. we, you know, it's, it's the jurisdiction of choice for hedge funds around the world, really, to incorporate. Um, and mainly because of the reasons Ruan's just said, but also because of the well-developed regulatory environment that we've got there. Um, you know, we've got a very, very well-developed set of, of laws that, that govern hedge funds and their formation. And then we've got a very well-established um, regulator there who is constantly striving to increase um, and improve the environment that hedge funds operate in there. So investors can, you know, not rest easy with the state of the markets right now, obviously, but, you know, it's as good as it's going to get in terms of governance globally for funds. We'll talk about the state of the markets in a moment, but I want to just peel back the curtain a little bit on alternative investments. What are they? How do you describe them? You know, what what, what are they? Well, an alternative investment can be anything. And, and we're really talking about alternative funds rather than alternative investments because the, the, these funds, they will invest in anything from long, short equities to structured credit to physical assets, art, cryptocurrency nowadays as well is, is becoming increasingly popular. So, you know, it can be a multitude of asset classes all rolled into one fund potentially, but generally not so much. Gotcha. And then just the state of the markets, Ruhan. I mean, we've seen, you know, mortgage rates go up, interest rates, you know, are holding now, but they're still higher. And inflation is historically high. And, and so you've got sort of a mixture that makes for a jittery investor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's uh, very true. Like, just our conversations we have um, with our fund managers you know, they all find the current environment like really hard to find opportunities. Um, obviously, the higher interest rates do lend to obviously a lot of, uh, you know, like credit and, um, you know, fixed income uh, products that obviously, um, you know, create a better um, a performance right now. So um, that's definitely a lot of the managers kind of focus more towards that end. But um, still, there's opportunities and it's, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a challenging uh, environment at the moment. And um, you know, as we heard at this conference where they said, you know, seems like, you know, we're at the, the, the um, top of the interest rate hike and that might, um, you know, come back slowly like um, over the next year. So, yeah, just again to kind of, you know, um, opportunities will there will be opportunities and just to kind of find them. And then that's it. Uh, yeah, but I think I think for right now, those high interest rates are meaning that, that you know, for example, pension providers and other other institutional investors, they're pulling some of their money from the hedge funds and putting it into the fixed income classes themselves, which is not great for the hedge fund managers, but you know that will change. And as you say, as the, the conference has said here at Bauer Elites, there's a whole cycle to this, this process and it will go back the other way before too long, we hope. But there is an opportunity when you have market volatility and when you have higher interest rates, right? I mean, there's a way 
uh, where you can really benefit the hedge funds uh, by taking advantage of the market as it is now. Yeah, I mean, the hedge, as Ruan said, some of the hedge funds there, you know, they will dip their toes more into fixed income than they have historically. Um, and yeah, the, the, there's opportunities, whatever the market is doing. Obviously, you know, as, as the funds are, as, as uh, equities are diving down and potentially there's room for more drop there, that's when the short selling can hopefully prop up the performance. In terms of where to invest, in terms of, you know, the different mixes you know, of investments, are you really more going towards credit as a way to invest, do you think? I think that the current environment certainly lends itself to more credit investing for sure. Um, but we are not investment advisors, so right. and we're not investment managers. We support the funds and we support the managers in terms of independence on the board. Um, so we wouldn't want to step on anyone's toes sure, and, sure. and try and direct anyone to which way to invest. But just in general, when the hedge funds come to you for servicing, what are you seeing in terms of the direction that they're going, Ruma? Um Well, I, I guess from our point of view, um, as Gary was saying, yeah, we more um, the service we offer is um, uh, independent directors on on the board. So um, you know what we obviously um, help the managers uh, uh, is with the corporate governance of the entities and um, just being completely independent of any other service provider, you know, we can give that uh, true, like, you know, uh, conflict-free view of how the entity needs to be um, managed. And, um, and we obviously lever, lever off our, um, you know, experience um, and, you know, make recommendations to the, to the fund manager so they can ensure, you know, that the fund is running the best interest of the investors. And um, sure. ultimately, the, you know, the investors' interests are being looked after. And protected, sure. There's a term in the industry called USP. What's USP? So that would be a unique selling point. Um, so as a service provider, you know, everyone tries to have one. Um, obviously, it, it's more difficult nowadays because, you know, everything's been done. So to have a unique selling point, it, it, it does help. And I think ours is we were pretty much the first provider of independent directors in the Cayman Islands. Um, we've been around for 50 years now. A lot of the, the newer director providers model themselves off our model. Um, so, you know, it, it is good to say that we were the first. We've got 250 years of collective experience on our team. Um, and we really know what we're doing. The guys know what they're doing. And we give our, um, our fund manager clients a lot of comfort. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of competition, right? Uh, there's different, you know, uh, managers of funds out there. So you really rely on this unique selling point, this USP, in order to differentiate yourself, right? Yeah, no, that's very true. Like, so, um, you know, there's many providers in the space. And, um, yeah, and, uh, you, you know, like the professionals we have at our um, uh, uh, company, you know, they all come from, you know, either qualified lawyers or qualified accountants or, um, you know, people that's been in the fund administration business for many years. So they obviously um, ha have been on the other side of the fence. So, the, um, you know, so we all have like, you know, quite some good experience and, um, uh, you know, uh, that we can offer to, to, to the clients. Yeah. Have you seen a lot of um, examples of USPs that haven't worked so well? Um, yeah, I mean, there are, there are some of our competitors who employ more of a, a um, let's say, an institutional model for, for providing governance. So they will have a, a person on the board of a fund, but the fund manager and the investors can never get hold of them because they have underlings or more junior people doing the work and the correspondence. And that, does, that hasn't worked so well in practice. So people are moving back more towards now the more personal approach, which is what we do. We like to have direct contact with the manager, direct contact with the investors and the other service providers. And it just creates a much better environment for giving the you know, the, the, the full attention that the governance requires. Ron, you really think that personal approach makes a difference? It works? Yeah, no, for sure. Because um, if you think about it, you know, a, a director appointment on a, on a board is, is like a personal appointment, you know, even though you um, do provide a service through your company. So it's um, all about, yeah, you um, I'm offering that service and making that connection with the manager and obviously making them comfortable that you have the experience and, you know, that you can assist them uh, and what they need in, on the fund. And as Gary said, you know, um, you know, we make ourselves available to the fund, fund uh, managers and 
we're available, you know, to have um, uh, conversations with the investors, um, you know, if they want to have some insight on uh, into the governance, uh, how the governance is run of the, the, the funds. Anything else you two want to add or say? Uh, we cover a lot of ground, but... Uh... We have. I, I mean, I, not, not really. I think we've, we've covered what we wanted to cover here today. So I would just say thank you, Derek, for your yeah. time. All right. Gary Ruhan, IMS yep. in the Cayman Islands. Uh, we, uh, it's a beautiful place, so why not? <laughs> All right. I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News, uh, Barrel Elites uh, Conference. Thank you for watching. We'll have more.